Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A week or two ago, I did an introductory video on Topaz Labs Photo AI. If you haven't seen that video, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. Now, after using Photo AI for a couple weeks, I've come to realize some of its limitations and some of its advantages. In today's video, I want to talk about and demo those limitations and those advantages so that you could best utilize Photo AI in your workflow. Now, if you're not familiar with Photo AI, it is an application that you could get free early access to if you own what Topaz Labs calls the Image Quality Bundle. The Image Quality Bundle consists of Gigapixel AI, Denoise AI, and Sharpen AI. And two questions I often get about these three applications are, one, how do you use them? They're really feature-rich applications. They have a lot of different models, they have a lot of different sliders, and people are really just confused how to use them. And second, in what order do you use them? Do you use Denoise AI, then Gigapixel, then Sharpen, or maybe you use Denoise, then Sharpen, then Gigapixel? Well, Photo AI takes all that guesswork away. You load an image into Photo AI, it will automatically apply noise reduction to the image if it needs it, and it will automatically sharpen the image if it needs it, and then you have the option to also enlarge it if you need to. So Photo AI really is, um, takes a lot of that guesswork away and it's a lot faster instead of having to send an image into three different applications one after the other. Just send it into Photo AI and you can do everything right there. Now finally before we begin I just want to remind everyone that I am going to be one of 15 instructors in this year's Lightroom Virtual Summit. It's taken place between October 3rd and October 7th. There's going to be 45 classes over those five days. And if you go to this website, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video, you could register for free. And over that five day period, you could watch all those classes for free. Now the classes aren't going to be live, meaning you have to be on your computer at let's say 1 p.m. to watch a specific class. They're recordings. So over that period of uh, days, you could watch those classes at your leisure for free. Now VIP passes are also available uh, where you could then watch these classes forever. There'll also be some freebies involved, like I'll be giving out some presets and the raw file I use in one of the classes you could uh, get so that you could then work along at home. A lot of the other instructors are going to be giving away freebies as well and that all all of that is available with a VIP pass. And here's a look at the instructors in the uh, summit this year. So again, I'll have that linked in the description below this video. Now, finally, let's get started with this video. I have this image and you could see if I zoom in, um, it's kind of blurry. It was shot at ISO 800. There is a considerable amount of noise. So this is an image that I probably would send to denoise and then maybe send to sharpen. And I also cropped it and I might want to enlarge it as well. I don't know about that yet. We'll see. But it is an image that I would use at least two of those three applications for maybe three, all three of those. And it would take a while, right? I'd have to send it individually to each of those applications. And this is where Photo AI shines. It saves you a lot of time. So to get this image into Photo AI from Lightroom, I'm just going to right click right in the image. I'm going to go down to edit in and then over and down. To Topaz Photo AI. Now a limitation of Lightroom is I can't send the raw file. I have to send a copy with Lightroom adjustments. These are the default settings. I'll keep those and I'll click edit. Now Lightroom is creating that TIFF file with those specs. You can see progress bar up here and it will open up into Photo AI. And when it opens, Photo AI is immediately going to examine the image. You can see over here it's detecting the subject. Subject is detected. And then no faces were detected. Well, there's no people in it. The subject is in focus. One thing I noticed, here's a limitation. It really has to be out of focus for Photo AI to think that it needs some sharpening done to it. So this image, as you could see, it was kind of soft. But a lot of that softness was probably because there was a lot of noise in the image. It was shot at ISO 800 and there was a considerable amount of noise. So what it determined it needed is just noise removal. And if I just click on the image, I'll get a before after and I'll have in post production of this video, I'll zoom in so you could see the chipmunk's face. There's before. 
and there's after. So you could see there's before and there's after. Not only did it get rid of the noise, but with Denoise AI, it also sharpened it a bit as well. But you have the option to add sharpening manually. So that's what I will do. I will turn on sharpening, sharpening here. Now, it's going to apply sharpening. It takes a while. You can see in the lower left-hand side, there's a progress bar. Right now, you can see it's sharpening. You got to wait for it to render. Now, it's rendered. So there's before and there's after. It is considerably sharp, and it may be over sharp. Here is another limitation. When you turn on sharpening, you can see how it picked up motion blur, and it put the strength at 29. When you do this manually, this is not automatic settings here. It's just using the last settings I used. So this isn't automatic. Now maybe when they do ultimately release this application, and it's, you know, the the true release, not a pre-release. Maybe this will be automatic when you manually put the, uh, you know, put the switch to on. But right now it's manual. So what you will have to do is you will have to try each of these, let's say lens blur, and wait for it to render, and then take a look and see if that looks a little better. There's before and there's after. That one looks a little better to me uh, than this. Now you could, of course, come and move the strength slider as well. You can see it didn't even move that at all. Just left it at 29. We'll take it down a little bit. Let it render. And actually that looks pretty good, I think. You can see it's considerably sharper. So there's that. Now there's this enhance. After using it a while, I've realized that enhance really is only to be used or it's meant to be used when you resize the image so you don't have to add enhance to an image that you're not resizing now i demonstrated or i showed in lightroom that there was a considerable crop to this image so i may want to enlarge it if i did i usually would use the scale so i would change it from one to two and then it has to render again now one thing i've noticed noticed i sharpened it first then i resized it when you do that, a lot of times it kind of, you gotta wait, now it's gonna add the sharpening. Let it render, now it's enhancing. See how it's over sharpened now? So my recommendation to you is, now to fit this to screen, by the way, hit Command or Control Zero and you could fit it to screen. Now you have to wait for it to render again, so it's gonna take a second. But my recommendation to you is if you need to add sharpening to an image and you want to resize it as well, is to resize it first. Let it render with its resize. Then check and see if it's sharp. Then at that point, if you think it needs sharpening, add sharpening. So now the preview is updated. There's before and there's after. It still needs sharpening. Now, you can see at two scale, it is pretty large, and maybe I don't even want to use a resizing at all. So I'll put this back to one, and when you do that, of course, it's not resized anymore, but it also, it just automatically left enhance on. So I'm going to turn that off, and then I'm going to go back up to sharpen and turn that on, and I do want to use lens blur. That seemed to be the better one, and around 23 look good, and I need to let it render. So... To kind of rehash, when you load an image into it, it's automatically going to analyze the image to find the subject, and then it's going to determine if it needs noise reduction and sharpening. For this image, it, determ it only determined that it needed noise reduction, and it automatically applied the correct amount of noise reduction. But I felt it needed sharpening too. So I manually turned on the sharpening slider, or the sharpen slider. When I did that, it picked, well, it didn't pick. It was on motion blur because it doesn't automatically choose between lens blur and motion blur and determine which one's better. It just uses your last choice. My last choice apparently was motion blur and it will leave the strength at the number you last used or the amount you last used. So you manually have to do this. You have to sample between lens blur and motion blur, determine which one is better and then manually move uh, the slider to determine, you know, just to see if that looks pretty good. Actually, it looks a little over sharpened the more I look at it. You could zoom in, hit Command or Control Plus, and you could zoom in. When you do that, though, you do have to let it re-render. 
It may be just a touch over sharp and particularly on the chipmunk's back and shoulders. So I'm going to pull that down to let's say 13 and again, maybe that's even a little bit too much. That looks a little better, a little more realistic. That looks pretty good. So at strength five. So you do have to manually do this. Also, I do recommend if you plan on resizing it, that you resize it before you sharpen it and then come back in and sharpen it because that seems to work best in the workflow. Fit to screen or to make it smaller, hit Commander Control minus. Fit to screen, Commander Control zero. So again, you got to let it render. So that's kind of my recommended workflow when you're in this. It isn't totally automatic. That's kind of uh, something I might have um, mischaracterized in that first video. I don't remember. Maybe I did. But anyway, that's the way you could best utilize it. I'm going to save it to Adobe Lightroom Classic. So you could see that it's saving it. And then we'll be back in Lightroom. And there is our image here. And here is our original image. Let's zoom in. So here's our original image, our kind of blurry image. And there is our sharper image. You can see that's more realistic sharpening there. And the noise is reduced considerably. You can see a lot of noise around the background here in the original image. The chipmunk's face is blurry. And we'll go back here. And you can see it's realistically sharpened, in my opinion. And the noise is gone. So it is much better. So that is Photo AI. My recommended way to go about using it. Hopefully this helps you better utilize it. Also a reminder in the description of this video, I'll have a link to Topaz Labs. And if you already own the image quality bundle, you get free access to this early release beta version of Photo AI. Check it out. And again, I'll remind you that I am one of the 15 instructors in the Lightroom Virtual Summit. I'll have a link to that in the description below this video as well. Check that out. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>